The centerpiece of most live and studio-based audio systems is a mixing board, or mixer. In most setups, every audio signal being recorded or played back will pass through the mixer, so it's essential to have a solid understanding of this complex piece of equipment. The mixer has several functions. To preamplify or boost signals produced by microphones to a level usable by the rest of the system, to equalize or adjust the levels of specific frequency ranges in a signal, to sum or combine many signals into fewer signals, to adjust the relative levels of the signals being combined, and finally to route or to send and receive signals, redistributing them throughout the system. Many mixers also have additional functions, such as applying effects or controlling digital systems. Let's look at how a relatively simple mixer works and how it can be used to control and route audio signals. Before anything can be done, audio must be sent to the mixer. In the case of this mixer, the back panel has many inputs and outputs for receiving and sending signals. Some mixers have inputs and outputs on top instead of in the back. Two main types of connections are used on mixers, XLR and quarter inch, although most mixers use a few other types of connections as well. Check out our video on interconnection to learn more about the uses of these and other connections. For our purposes here, it's important to know that XLR connections are used mostly with microphones and quarter inch connections are used mostly with other professional audio devices, such as amplifiers and effects units. The majority of the mixing board is taken up by channel strips, each of which is basically a column of knobs and faders that allow you to adjust and route one audio signal or channel. The channel number on each strip corresponds with the numbered inputs on the back. Most channel strips on a mixer will be identical, but sometimes a few will be slightly different, often featuring dual quarter-inch inputs for stereo signals. After it enters the mixer, a signal first passes through its channel strip from top to bottom. Throughout this path, the signal may be sent to other sections as well, but this routing doesn't stop it from continuing down the channel strip simultaneously. In its path throughout the mixer, a signal hits several stages of amplification, each of which allows for adjustable boosting or attenuation of the signal. A signal first passes through the preamplification stage. This stage is essential for boosting a low-level microphone signal to line level, or a high enough level to be passed throughout the rest of the mixer. The gain knob allows you to adjust how much the signal is boosted. On our mixer, the signal passes through the equalization, or EQ, section next, which can be enabled or disabled using a switch. This section lets you boost or attenuate several ranges of the signal's frequency content, adjusting the timbre, or color, of the sound. To learn more about equalization, check out our video on frequency domain. The auxiliary send section is usually next in the channel strip. This section allows a variable amount of the signal to be sent to one or more auxiliary outputs. These outputs are often connected to stage monitor speakers in a live setting, or to headphones or effects units in the studio. It's important to remember that where you send the signal here does not affect its path throughout the rest of the channel strip. The bottom section of the channel strip features several controls. Mute, Solo, Pan, and Level. After the signal passes through these controls, it will typically be combined with the signals from the other channels and sent out to the main left and right outputs of the mixer. The Pan knob allows different amounts of the signal to be sent to the left and right outputs. The signal can be sent to the left, to the right, to the center, or both sides equally, or to anywhere in between. When the Mute switch is depressed on a channel, that signal won't be combined with the others to be sent to the main outputs. The solo switch works inversely, allowing you to send only that channel to the main outputs, effectively muting the rest of the channels. Finally, the level fader controls the last gain stage of the channel strip, allowing the signal to be boosted or attenuated one last time before being sent to the master section. The master section is usually on the far right side of the mixing board. This is where signals are combined, or summed, and then sent to the mixer's outputs. Each combined signal path is called a bus. Different mixers have different numbers of buses, but all have at least one, called the master, main, or left-right bus, which is the combination of all channels on the board, assuming they aren't muted. The master bus is sent to the main left and right outputs. Some mixers have multiple subgroups as well, which allow other combinations of signals to be sent to other outputs. These differ from the master bus because they're typically mono buses, therefore each is sent to only one output. The master bus is stereo and is sent to two outputs, left and right. If a mixer has subgroups, each channel will have switches allowing it to be sent to specific groups. The master section usually has several other controls, such as auxiliary return knobs. 
Because the auxiliary sends are often used to connect to effects units, the mixer must have returns for the outputs of the effects units to be connected back into the system. The auxiliary return knob will control the level of the affected signal being passed to the master bus to be combined with the other signals. Most mixers also have a stereo control room bus, which is used by the sound engineer to monitor the output of the mixer. Usually this section allows you to select what pre-existing bus you want to send to the control room, as well as to adjust the level of the control room output. If the mixer has effects built in, their settings will likely be in the master section as well. In addition, many mixers meant for live sound feature a master equalization section that allows you to adjust the combined frequency content of the master bus. For more information on anything in this video, check out the links on this page.